what we're going to show you here is that these guys, remember section one are some of your basic rhythmic settings. Section two is your gate slicer setting, your matrix or your grid. And then section three are all these other effects. So I'm just going to start with the obvious. You click on each of them. And as you can see, the stuff on, click on each of them. And then as you can see, the stuff on the right over here, this is the graphic of the settings, changes. Now, it doesn't really change that much right now because I've set them all to full so that you can get maximum impact. Uh, right now, this is volume. And this slider here is the same as this percentage here. You see it says 70 point, what is it, zero, eight percent. So that represents this slider. As I move this up and down, you can see that value goes up and down. Now, what it means is that this is telling you that, okay, right now, 62.20% of volume is being affected per slice by these guys. And you have the same settings. You've got full, you've got empty, and then you've got random. So let's start with full. And then I'll just play with these guys and you can kind of hear what the effect is. Remember, this is going to gate slice, not just which slice is being played, but at what volume. So I'll turn it on and we'll let the buffer fill and then I'll go to work. And a matter of fact, I'll turn drunk walk off just so you can hear it straight. Can you keep it down? Can you feel it? Can you keep it down? Can you feel it? Can you keep it down? Let's be honest, this is one of the least exciting of the bunch because it does so many other cool things with the other settings that I almost feel like you really don't want to bother with this. You want to leave it in full. And let's actually just hear all of the effects. And so I'll move on to the second one, which is a resonator. We'll turn it on. You have two parameters, time and decay. And again, I'll let it play straight, full, and then I'll randomize each of these. Right out the gate, it gives you some pretty cool effects. Um, and I'm just going to jump right in and randomize these things. And then, of course, draw some curves and see what fun we can have. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? You feel it love. Can you keep it down? So as you can hear, by adding this sort of increasing and decreasing time quotient, it starts uh, modulating the pitch as the resonance goes from high to low, or the decay goes from high to low while it's resonating. So you have a lot of really cool effects here alone. Uh, one of the things I would advise is to keep them, uh, one of them mostly full and then play with the other. But if you play with both in random, uh, the odds of both parameters hitting at the right value, at the right slice to make something cool is pretty low. Uh, so your percentage of success kind of goes down and down and down. Okay, so that's the resonator. Let's turn it off, move on to the amplitude modulator. Again, full, and you've got frequency and depth, and I'll play with these and show you what they do. Right out the gate, I'm sure, full, you'll be, it'll, the, the effect will be pretty obvious. Feeling love, can you keep it down? You feel it? Now remember, these freq this frequency and this depth refers to this frequency and this depth. You also have a dry wet over here. Of course, you can randomize. Some of these effects are cooler when they're really pronounced, like in this case, having the depth really up high, having the wet full, and then just modulating the frequency in this 16th note step pattern. Um, I think it's a really cool effect. So it, it almost doesn't matter again that you have all these uh, anomalies on the original audio because now we're destroying it to a point where it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then you can move on to the filter, which is your obligatory filter. Of course, frequency and resonance, no dry wet here. Uh, again, frequency over here, 
resonance over here being reflected by these percentages. And then, of course, you have the sliders here as well. So that's pretty straight up, but again, pretty cool effects. One of the things you'll note though, because the filter has a tendency to really affect the volume, having the filter on and the volume on in some kind of random fashion, these two things might work against each other. So you can see a lot of the power starts to go away when the volume uh, is anything less than full, which is one of the reasons I uh, tend not to mess with it too much. But if you want to uh, really change the volume, again, when you're messing with the filter, you're already getting a lot of volume because while the frequencies go down to a fairly small amount, you're losing a lot of high end, a lot of mid range. And on a female vocal like this, there's a lot of energy being filtered out. Um, then of course you can also move on to the envelope, which is really powerful. You've got length, shape, peak, and then this graphic on the bottom represent, is represented by curve. Um, it also kind of shows you graphically a little bit about what's going on. So if I leave everybody full and kind of start from the beginning and then slowly work things downward, you should hear the effect pretty pronounced. So this is your uh, sort of reverse sawtooth. Can you keep it down? And now the buffer's full. Now that's a little intense. I think the envelope effect is so strong that it's almost better to just mess with these values and create an interesting shape like this almost square wave here um, and let it do its work that way as opposed to messing with these because um, especially in this particular sample, maybe in something that's a little longer, a little more legato, you might find some more interesting effects. Um, and certainly at eighth notes, that might get a different effect. In this particular sample, this is cutting it off really aggressively and um, I'm finding that I just kind of prefer it this way. Anyway, that's the envelope. Moving on to the shaper. Again, you've got a mount, dry, wet. And the shaper is a, a distortion of sorts. Now, that's pretty aggressive. That's getting into industrial. So here is a place where randomizing might actually work to your benefit. Can you keep it down? You feel it low. Can you keep it down? If you want to mess with the dry wet and kind of have it globally go up and down, turn this full and then slowly move the percentage down. So right now it's at zero percent. Feel it low. Can you keep it down? You feel it low. Can you keep it down? You feel it low. And again, playing with the random might be cool. You might want to actually just draw your own curve and be very specific about which sounds are distorted and not um, with many of these effects. So mind you, we're just taking these one at a time. I'll show you this last one, and then we'll start combining them. And then you'll see how the combination of the possibilities become pretty intense. Uh, the roll is much like you would expect. Um, it basically repeats each slice by a certain amount based on a curve. So I'll turn it down, turn the curve up, and then just turn it on and slowly introduce the effect. To me, the roll is the place where the randomization tends to have the best effect. Feel 
So that's a lot of fun. Uh, you can see in this case, I decided to kind of draw my own curve because it's very clear in this sample that certain syllables are poking out more than others. Um, I do want a little bit of intelligibility, but not that much. So drawing my own curve here uh, allows me to have more control over this roll. So I'm going to turn the amount down, but then I'm going to turn the roll, the shaper back on, the filter back on, and the resonator back on, just to show you a little bit of combination here. <laughs> So this is a combination I like a lot. The roll, the shaper, the filter, and the resonator. Uh, you can also turn on the AM, turn the filter off, and the shaper. A lot of fun. And so you can have fun just playing with this section, just playing with each of these, just playing with a few of these with this straight. You can drunk walk this and then leave these guys on. But then there's this guy. And this guy's, <laughs> I mean, the possibilities get crazy here. So in this sequence morph section, you basically have four different settings. So there's setting one, setting two, setting three, setting four. Uh, these dots are a little confusing, but basically what they mean is everything in this column is referring to saving. You can see that little floppy disk icon. So if I click four, all of these settings have now been saved in setting four. And of course, if I want to delete settings four, go to default, I can hit uh, the X right here. And this basically says switch between them. So now this is four. If I take this cursor on the right and this is three, basically everybody's empty, everybody's full, and then some random, here's what you get. And I'll turn these guys on just for fun because I don't really know what effect is going to be made here. I mean, we're on four and I'm going to turn the envelope. Um, I'll just turn it to full. And I'll go to the shaper and I'll put it to empty and empty and I'll save it again. And so now here's four. Part of that is the volume. If I come down to volume and make it full, I'm going to take drunk walk off for a moment. Now that's the envelope. The envelope is doing its thing pretty aggressively here. I'm going to make the length even higher. You know what? For now, I'm going to take the envelope off and I'm going to save it again. Now, the roll's doing its business. The shaper's not doing anything. The envelope's not doing anything, but I leave the shaper on. The filter's doing a bunch. The AM's doing a bunch. The resonator's doing a bunch. The volume's not doing anything until I do my morphing. I'm going to hold it on the roll. So as you can see, you can morph between these four settings. You can build four different kinds of hearse manipulation and just simply morph between them. Okay, all of this is available free, live. Well, it's not free to your pocketbook, but it's free for you to mess with at any moment. It's wide open, it's live, knock yourself out. You can, of course, automate all of these things. That's, I think, where Hearst takes it to a whole different level. 
because you can automate these things on and off. You can automate them dry and wet. You can automate them high and low. Um, you can really build it in clip by clip, section by section, moment by moment, uh, and just go nuts. Um, and so this is hearse. I really encourage you to check them out uh, from our friends at kdevices.com. Uh, good friends out of, I believe, France. And they make some pretty cool chips. Uh, and they make some pretty cool tools. And they've got some really cool scents coming out in the near future. You should definitely stay tuned. But check them out, kdevices.com. Hearse, it's a blast. <laughs> very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do and especially in electronic music. Since, since coming to Pyramide I, I've discovered electronic music and you know San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.